All right, so the next lab that we're going to be working on is still going to involve the tiny DB, um, but it's going to be focused on creating an app that has settings and has features that you can kind of save and remember so that when a user opens the app, it's their custom settings and they don't have to go in and change it every single time they open up or want to use their app. Okay. So what you've got going on on the screen here is this is just the tiny little game that you're going to build. Um, the game isn't going to take very long to make, and I pretty much give you exactly what you need to do it. Um, but it's basically just a little sort of pong game where there's a computer um, bar that moves back and forth, and then you've got your player bar that you can kind of control on your own. All right. Now, that's really not the main point of the lab. The main point of the lab is going to be the settings button. All right. So when you click on the settings button. It's going to take a little while because it's the emulator, but it'll get there. All right. So the first thing that you're going to want to notice about this page is it's got a few different options here. One for dot size, dot speed, um, player width, computer width, and then dot color. Um, and what also you should notice is that each of these has been automatically set to whatever the user chose. So the dot size is currently at 25 because that's what the user had picked. And if I change this to five, and maybe I want the game to go a little slower so that it's easier, and I change this to 20, and then maybe I want my paddle to be a little larger. And maybe I want the computer's paddle to be a little smaller. And then maybe I want my dot color to, you know, be whatever this combination is, something a little more on the blue side. All right, so I can save all of these settings. All right, and the lab is going to kind of walk you through how to do that. All right, and when I click Save Settings, it's going to bring me back to the actual game screen. Wait for it. We'll get there in a second. Um, and all of those changes that I just made are going to be evident in my game. All right, so the ball is going to be smaller. It's going to be a little slower. The color is going to change. Um, and the paddle sizes will have changed as well. All right, so give it a second. It's almost there. We're on the screen. It just has to start up. All right, so you can see the ball is more blue. Um, these paddles have changed size. But, you know, the game pretty much works exactly as it did before. All right, so... All of that you actually could have done before even learning about um, databases. What's going to make this unique is if we restart this app, those settings are already going to be in place. I'm not going to have to go back in and change the dot size or change the dot color or the speed or anything else like that. So if I go to my connect menu here and I say refresh companion screen, all right, it's going to reload this app. And because I'm using the database to keep track of that information, when the app reloads, all of those settings are already going to be there. So you can see the dot is still blue. The bars are the same size they were before. Um, and the speed is whatever it was sort of the last time. So that's going to be sort of the big idea of today is, um, or of, of this lab is kind of, using the database to keep track of settings so that when an app loads up, it loads up in the format that the user has requested and, and specified at some previous time. So again, it's going to just be going into the database. It's going to be learning how to save things. All right. Remember, everything has a tag and the tag is sort of the label. And then underneath that tag is the data. So 
for this app, you're going to have one tag for the computer bar. You're going to have one tag for the player bar. You're going to have one tag for the dot color. You're going to have one dot tag for the dot size. And you're going to have one tag for the dot speed. All right. And all of those things are going to be saved in the database. So when the app first loads, it's going to look in the database. It's going to find the values of those tags, and then it's going to use them to change the properties of the game so that it always loads to the correct configuration. All right. And this is some of the code that you're going to be writing. Um, basically the idea is you're going to have a lot of these variables that keep track of the different properties. When the screen loads, you're going to use the database to look up those values, set the variables, set the properties, um, and then just go through from there. And again, the other screen is going to be similar. It's going to be, you know, using the database to set the spinners, using the database to set um, the sliders. And then when they click the button, storing all of that information in the database so that it's ready to be used um, by the app. All right. So again, it's just going to give you one more chance to sort of practice with the database, get familiar with it, get used to the blocks that we use. Um, and it's just going to be a little different setting than the last one. After this lab, we're going to be moving on to web databases. Um, so that'll be kind of cool because we'll set up a single web database. And even though everybody's going to be at home working on it on their computer, we're going to be sharing the same database. So when one person changes something, everybody will be able to change, uh, see what they change. So again, that'll come up um, next after this lab, probably next week sometime. Um, but that's kind of where we're headed with this. So this is one more chance to sort of use TinyDB, um, and then we'll move on to the website of all of this. All right, I hope this is helpful. And as always, if you have any questions, make sure you reach out um, and email me um, so that we can clear things up as quickly as possible. All right, good luck.